When we look in the mirror, we hope to see a reflection of ourselves in our best state. We hope the mirror captures our beauty, diversity, and authenticity. But what happens when the mirror is broken? When the cracks cause disproportionalities? When the mirror does not reflect who you are? As you look at the picture behind me and you see the black and brown students staring into the mirror, I want you to think about the state of education today. Ask yourself, when those students walk into classrooms, do the teachers staring back at them look like them? For those that don't know, the teaching field is 80% white female while the cultural mosaic of students sitting in America's classrooms is predominantly black and brown. So it is our responsibility as a society to diversify the teacher pipeline and give black and brown students access to teachers that look like them. I want you all to repeat after me. The diversification of the teacher pipeline, teacher pipeline is, not is not the intentional deletion, the intentional deletion of, white teachers. of white teachers. Thank you all very much. See, this is not about the erasure of white teachers. It's about the intentional disruption of the disproportionality in America's schools. When you look at this picture, you must understand children cannot be what they cannot see. This is why representation matters so much. We are failing our students when we don't provide a myriad of teachers that look like them, understand their lived experiences, can unlock their ingenuity, and most importantly, engage them in learning that affirms who they are. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana in the 80s and 90s when the city was nicknamed the murder capital of the world. So education was extremely important. It was the only pathway out of a place that was crime-ridden and ranked 49th and 50th in education for decades. Growing up, we faced challenges that seemed insurmountable. But it was the black teachers that looked like us that helped to change the trajectory. They understood our circumstances. They helped us navigate poverty by empowering us with knowledge and stimulating our creativity. They saved us. They kept us accountable. They modeled excellence for us. They created inclusive classrooms and educational lessons that were so engaging, we still reminisce about assignments to this day. They taught us that we were worthy of a quality education and that we could be anything and everything. I remember my 10th grade honors English teacher, Mrs. Herring. She was a slender black woman that came to school dressed as if she knew there would be an impromptu photo shoot. <laughs> she was very confident and owned every room she entered. She was giving Michelle Obama before Michelle Obama. When she spoke, we listened because she used words we had never heard. Every time she used her big words, as we called them, we would whisper the same phrase the students say today, you're doing too much. <laughs> because we couldn't comprehend that she was exposing us to the words that would write our futures. I would purposely disrupt her class by talking while she was teaching. And I don't know if she knew but my disruptions occurred because I did not believe that I belonged in an honors English class. She could have given up and changed my schedule, but she forced me to stay, and I am so glad she did. 
her persistence her high expectations, her refusal to accept less than my best is the reason I stand here today. She believed in me long before I was able to believe in myself. Let me be clear. I had some good white teachers throughout my educational journey. They tried their best to provide a welcoming learning environment, but they were unprepared to handle such an intricate undertaking. They weren't given cultural handbooks or made aware of the significance of affirming my home language. They coddled me because they were afraid to watch me fail, not knowing that setting higher expectations would have forced me to excel. They were unaware of the significance of connecting my culture to their classrooms. And in 2022, many white teachers are doing the work, learning the cultural strategies to ensure their success in teaching students of color. This is why teacher diversity really matters. Research shows us that the addition of black and brown teachers enhances the educational experiences of all students. Society wants us to believe teacher diversity only impacts black and brown children in a positive way. No, white children benefit exponentially when they have teachers of color because they are exposed to their lived experiences and can engage in dialogue that perpetuates the deconstruction of inequitable systems in America. More importantly, they can honestly examine the preconceptions we all have, which leads to the collaboration that will move this country forward. It's important to note that diversifying the teacher pipeline cannot continue to be the robotic checking of the diversity, equity, and inclusion boxes. I hired 10 black and brown teachers, so now the school is diversified. Check. I gave the black and brown teachers a box of school supplies, so we've achieved equity. Check. We are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month in September, Native American History Month in November, Black History Month in February, Arab American Heritage Month in April, and Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in May. So there's the diversity and inclusion. Check. Herein lies the problem. Too many school systems across the country are checking off boxes and not checking themselves. If we really want to diversify the teacher pipeline, it's simple. We must add house back to school. Everybody say schoolhouse. Schoolhouse. H, hire humane leaders. Our educational decision makers must eradicate their biases and create inclusive schools that welcome teachers of color to show up authentically and unapologetically. They must also be aware of the overwhelming weight all teachers have endured in the classroom since COVID. Their focus should be caring for their teachers so that teachers can care for their students. Oh, outcast those who criticize inclusiveness. If they won't create culturally reflective classrooms, they must go. Too many teachers are rejecting the idea of cultural responsiveness and irretrievably harming black and brown students. I have always said the most detrimental threat to a student of color is an ineffective teacher. And those that refuse to embrace the cultural competency necessary to ensure the success of students of color need to exit education. You Unlock the intellectual genealogy of teachers of color. They are so multifaceted. Their innovation is immeasurable. If you listen, they will stay. Let them lead the diversity, equity, and inclusion task forces that will drive educational organizations and school systems. They know what's best for students. They are the experts. 
They've identified the problems and are the architectural geniuses that can design the solutions. S, support teachers of color by providing effective mentorship. Let them learn from distinguished teachers of color that can guide them along their teaching journeys. Create authentic spaces to develop affinity groups that allow teachers of color to continuously reinvigorate themselves and amplify their voices on matters that impact them most. E, expose teachers of color to higher learning opportunities that solidify pathways to leadership so that teachers of color become leaders of color. Leaders of color are so integral because they cultivate and protect teachers of color while they are in the trenches working hands-on with students. Woo! Did y'all get all of that? Yeah? Is everybody good on the house? We got house? All right. Okay. Now I need your help to build it. We need to place one million teachers of color in America's classrooms by 2030. And we can achieve this goal if we do two things. Everybody on my left say find. find. Everybody on my right say fund. fund. We must find high school students of color that exemplify traits of effective teachers remove the stigma surrounding the profession, mentor them, and create sustainable pipelines that will meet the future needs of school systems. We must fund college for students of color majoring in education. We are no longer accepting students of color simply being first-generation graduates. We need them to be first-generation unimpoverished entering their careers without the burden of student loans. Leaders of corporations, put your money where your mouth is. Create scholarships that will assist students of color in earning their education degrees. We have a lot of work to do. But in the words of the late, great Senator John Robert Lewis, this is good, necessary trouble. And when good, necessary trouble transforms the educational and economic outcomes for our most disenfranchised populations, I think we can all agree that it is most definitely worth getting our hands a little dirty. I just have one question for you. Are you in? If you believe in this challenge, I want you to grab your Teacher Diversity Now sign and stand in solidarity. Let's work together to change the reflection for students of color in our nation's classrooms.